Radical. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to Radical Rabbit Fire Combat Response for February the 1st through February the 7th, 2021. Starting out, we got Razo. I would ask what's the point of making a timeline retrospective of a game series that James Androff has zero experience with. Then you realize it's basically just to provide context and an excuse to advertise some mobile game. I know James isn't as big of a gamer as his nerd persona would lead some people to believe, but come on, how much more corporate can you get? Yeah, just the original spirit of the Anger Video Game Nerd is completely lost now. Uh, he is all about shilling things, ExpressBVN, uh, mobile games. I don't know if he still does those Jode 400R wood watches. As if a member of his original, you know, uh, fan base would splurge on a $400 Jode wood watch. I mean, not even like a fucking smartwatch, but like a just uh, a niche wood watch. And back in 2018, Razo, back in 2018, I had these uploads basically just, you know, calling him out and exposing him. But, you know, all those videos, I got so many, so many people coming by and telling me that I was off base. You know, he's still the same nerd. He's totally not gone corporate. Here we are in 2021. And who was right? Jack Webb, did you try it yourself? You're talking about that, uh, that device, that self-pleasure device. I forget what it was called. Uh, but Jack stopped by on that upload, which, you know, I found it to be is humorous. I don't remember a lot about that upload, but, you know, I'm not going to resist an opportunity to talk about a self-pleasuring device if I can. That's just pretty funny stuff. Uh, and I don't know if you're being serious. I thought you was joking, but you had a follow up. Jack Wood had a follow up like, how can you talk about it if you haven't tried it? And my response to him was something along the lines of, well, my apologies for not being the loser, a loser that needs to get one of those virtual things to put on his, <laughs> you know, I can get the real thing is what I'm saying. I know a lot of you out there can't get the real thing and you might need a device, a mechanical device that's going to replace women. But uh, spoiler alert, such a thing does not exist. All right. To me, there'd be a much more, like, I'm not putting in anything mechanical, all right? I've seen mechanical things fail. Uh, could you imagine a nightmare scenario where you get yourself stuck in it and you have to go to the hospital? You know, I think there was an episode like that of uh, Big Bang Theory, I believe. I forget, uh, was it the guy with the, the one with the big nose? He had to go and there was a gripper. That was a funny episode there. But yeah, Jack Webb, I would say just... You know, stick to the adult websites and a bottle of Jergens is, is what I'm saying. It's cheaper. You'll enjoy yourself more than, you know, the reality, the dark reality that you got this loud machine in your lap. I hear it's pretty loud, too, that thing. Jackson Ritchie. For clarification, James doesn't know what Dark Souls is because there's a clip from James and Mike Mondays playing Super Mario Brothers 3. Mike brings up Dark Souls being a difficult fantasy RPG, and James comments, is it a side-scroller? Here's a clip, and go to the 229 mark. Uh, that, that video has a lot of people, it, at, I think for what it's worth, that upload was not a bad take, and they spoke some truth, that, well, James is, he's not a, it's not that he's not a current gamer, because I think everyone knows he's not a current gamer, but he doesn't know much uh, really jack shit about video games in general. I mean, we criticize Metal Jesus for not really knowing a lot about certain games or getting something wrong, a little minute detail in a collector's edition. What was it, that Command & Conquer collector's edition? He called something something different. But James gets by scot-free, scot-free without criticism, it seems. I don't know what it is. I, I really don't, you know? It's almost like, you know, he's Teflon. You just can't criticize this guy like you can other people. I would say it's incredibly, like, how the fuck can you be taken legitimately in anything related to video games in the past decade? How can you be the angry video game nerd if you don't even know what Dark Souls is? I think even Metal Jesus is making fun of him there. <laughs> he doesn't even know what Dark Souls is. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me. I don't have all their Dark Souls. Can somebody can somebody donate a couple of those to me? Thanks. Mr. Indy. Those people that are always offended by everything? Oh, you mean liberals. That's what they're called. Uh, yes, a lot of them are actually offended by a ton of things. You know, you have to get the uh, pronouns right. 
Uh, you have to, you know, I just think it's really silly, like the GameStop ma'am. That was a moment that I'll always point to where I'm like, you know, that is a dude. I'm sorry, you can't tell me that that's a lovely lady. That is a dude, Caitlyn Jenner, uh, that's a man. All right, you can call it Caitlyn, but it's actually Bruce. All right, uh, just the, the crazy concept that, oh, I don't know, you actually are the gender that you were born as? Is that, is that such a crazy, crazy concept? Also, it's not just the left that's offended. Hello, Mr. Indy. You ever heard of, like, conservative Christians, right? Uh, perfect example is there was somebody I worked with, and she was a hot thing. She was a hot, hot, hot woman, right? She was gorgeous. And she was, I think, maybe about to turn 21, and she wasn't a drinker. Of course, she had never, you know, been with a, a man or anything. She was waiting for, you know, marriage and all that kind of good stuff, right? Uh, big Jesus freak. Big Jesus freak, right? And I made a joke once about cupcakes. Just cupcakes. And I was like, those cupcakes are heavenly. Or I forget what it was, but I brought up Jesus in a cupcake joke. And she lost her shit. And she came up to me, she stormed at me, and she said, like, Jesus' name is not to be used in cupcake jokes. And I was like, wow. I was thinking to myself, whoever gets their hands on this one, whoo, she has a lot of steam to let off. Okay, that is going to be a fun night, okay? And it's not probably not going to be honeymoon night. Someone's going to get to that thing before, you know? And she's going to be thanking that person, like, yeah, I, I, I can't believe. That's not really that bad of a thing at all. I can't believe that... You know, you have to get married to do that, you know. Rusty Shackleford. I know Dragon Quest 11s is on Game Pass. I played about five hours of it on Switch, and it's a pretty good game so far. If you don't like the modern art style, you can switch it to a 2D style where the game gets really old school. I believe cutscenes are still retained in the modern art style, though. I can't recall a lot of games that actually switch that up, you know, switch that up to the game style or the look. Of course, we had Master Chief Collection to where you can go from the old style to like the newer graphics, which was kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, you said it's on Game Pass, Dragon Quest XI S. I'll probably definitely download that to get me some experience with the Dragon Quest series, you know. But I'm not like James Rolfe. I'm not going to do a retrospective on the series that I've never even fucking played. Bill M., chronologically confused franchise doesn't make sense if James hasn't played the effing games. The worst part is that James says in the beginning of the video that he spent weeks researching the series. Yeah, the guy with no time absolutely did that, sure. Bingo. You know, he has no time. He got no time for anything. No time for nothing. But he spent weeks researching the series. As if. Energy Turtle. BVGT. Board Video Game Tool. That's interesting, okay? How about uh, CV, CVGN, you know, corporate video game nerd? I know a lot of you can probably come up with some interesting ones in the comment section down below. Not saying you should, but if you want to. Sean A, I'm surprised he had a good enough time, had enough time to make a video. They should deep fake him into the video since he doesn't have any time. Oh, oh, don't give him any ideas, you know? I think what they might do is actually have him just record some audio and send it to them. And then they'll have an animated James. You're laughing right now, but no, no. When it gets to the point where he is just almost comatose and has no time to even show up and read the scripts, they'll have an animated James. Yeah, yeah, mark my words. Yeah, it'll happen. Well, if it doesn't happen, I don't know. It, I'm just saying it's a possibility, so don't mark my words. I'm not guaranteeing it happens, but I'm just going to... I'm not going to put anything past him, basically, you know, or somebody had the funny idea to dress up one of the fight guy, uh, one of the fat guys like the angry video game nerd. I think they even know that like that wouldn't work. You know, they still need James. You know, there is a body, you know, even even if he's like comatose, like Weekend at Bernie's, they would sit him on that couch and, you know, have somebody do the puppet motions just so he's there. Matt Dragon. You have no time, James, and give me money, Tony. I'm almost ready for them to take a flying leap. If I ever see them in person, I won't be losing sleep. You said if you never see them in person, you won't be losing sleep anytime soon. It's really sad, actually. I don't see why anybody would really care to see James or uh, Tony or any of these, you know, loser nobodies in person regardless. It's not like they're celebrities. Part of the problem, Matt, is, and I talk about this on the channel a lot, is, is we take these nobodies 
and we elevate them to be somebodies when essentially they're YouTube nobodies. And I just don't, you know, you have these conventions where a lot of these people meet up and, you, you know, who's going to be starstruck at like James Rolfe or Mike Matei? Like who's legitimately, who would be starstruck at these people? I'm just wondering. Or Tony? Like to me, I'm like, who the fuck is Tony? You, you come by and you ask me to make a video about uh, some site and I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, I just don't understand the fascination with a lot of these individuals and mostly if I spend my time talking about somebody it's because they're doing something really egregious or wrong or they're scamming people or you know they don't appreciate their audience or you know there's a reason behind it is what I'm saying Matt so uh there's a lot you probably have to learn about YouTube YouTubers and I think this channel of any channel is a great resource for that Midnight Jank RPG Hilarious video. I see a pattern here. Get simps from YouTube. Tease them with the OnlyFans. Get rich. Isn't FOMO doing the same thing? Destiny FOMO. It's only a matter of time before she, FOMO, jumps on that boat. Also, on a side note, the video I found was with a let's, uh, let's call him Giant Teddy Bear. Didn't see a yoga ball one left out loud. I didn't see the teddy bear one. Uh, you're talking about... Uh, the bathwater one, I, I forget her name. See, you know, these people really aren't that important to me. I even forget their name sometimes, you know. Uh, did, that's going to bother me. You know, the with the pink hair and everything. Well, she made her transition to adult movies and OnlyFans from YouTube. And Destiny FOMO also has an OnlyFans. I don't know what she does in OnlyFans. I don't know what she shows in OnlyFans. But, you know, I think as a business sense... You know, yeah, there's going to be a lot of simps out there. You should read some of the comments on Destiny FOMO's uh, YouTube channel. And you should read some of those comments from people. And it's just, you know, you ha there's nothing that can be done for the simps. I mean, you could try to save some of them, but some of those people, they're way too far gone. And I think it's, uh, I think it's of course, sad that a lot of these women are using those simps uh, in that way. And I don't get how a lot of people will defend Destiny for doing basically a lot of the same things. I mean, if you if you conduct yourself in a certain way and you obviously show off things, you know, for people and you know that's going to get a response, you know, you know what you're doing. So there's people that there's women that can actually conduct themselves in a respectful manner and then there's then there's other women but i won't i won't link those two exactly together i won't i will not so i don't think it's the same exact scenario from what i've seen but here again like i have i don't go to a lot of these channels so it might be i haven't been to that one channel in probably maybe 2 years i'm not sure so maybe she's like the bathwater girl maybe she'll have fomo bathwater or something like that i, I don't know Retro Game Reaper. No one mentioned the gameplay, so I freaking love Another World. I'd never played that before, and I noticed right away I died instantly. Like, I tried to walk over those little black things, and then they hit me in the leg. Then I tried to jump over them, and it was so annoying you had to get the timing exactly right. And that big, you know, uh, gorilla chases you, and again, you have to get that timing right. So, you know, I might say that, hey, you know what? That was the side-scrolling Dark Souls of the early 90s on Super NES. Yeah, you heard it here. The Winged Avenger. I eat the expired food that supermarkets leave outside for trash. That way I can give all the money I earn to Woodhawker and Metal Jesus. They have plumbing problems, you know. That's perfectly reasonable. Hey, you know, I wonder what expired foods probably um, people might be eating right now. Maybe cookies, maybe cereals. You know, do you have an experience eating an expired food, maybe reading it, and then, I guess because of all the preservatives, you know, if it was a zombie apocalypse, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, you'd have to eat expired food at, at on some level. Uh, would you probably opt for maybe the cookies, the chips, or the canned goods? I'm thinking probably the canned goods, if you had to eat expired food, probably the canned goods. I-V-O-G. I-V-O-G. YouTube became work when Chris ran out of magazines to read. Talking about classic gaming quarterly. You know, I could actually convert this entire channel into magazine reading. 
I currently have about almost a thousand magazines. You know, I, I was a collector for a, a while of old video game magazines, old uh, comic magazines, wizard magazines, you know. I just become fascinated with collecting older magazines and seeing what how times were for different times, right? Uh, so, yeah, you know, I, I'm looking to maybe sell a lot of my collection, probably. But I have a ton of video game magazines. I, I just do. And, you know, these things are just everywhere. You know, you come across them at yard sales all the time. And I'm talking about, like, I would get magazines for, like, a dime. I'd be like, Whew. How much you want for that? Eh, it's just a magazine, you know, dime. I'm like, hell, hell yeah. That's a lot of reading in there, probably. And, uh, yeah, I just have a thousand. Like, I have over a thousand. I could literally, you know, I could do those. And they're simple. I, I read magazines. Like, and that guy thinks he's so great. You read fucking magazines, dude. Get a grip, okay? Uh, Dumez. Speaking on Nintendo, Drew, old buddy, in the last eight months, you posted seven videos, uh, taking over $200 of Patreon and an unknown amounts for the fucking join button. Do you really need to be taking your audience cash when you are basically not posting anymore? If you feel like not posting that often, that would be totally fine if you were not charging your fans for the videos. Now, here's a guy that probably, you know, gets away from criticism uh, like the gaming historian. Uh, but if you're from what you describe, he seemed like a guy that wouldn't he upload like weekly at the least, didn't he? That's a problem because, you know, the whole argument for Patreon is that I need your money for these uploads. I need your money. And in this case, he has some of the best thumbnails on YouTube. You know, maybe the problem is, Dumez, he's doubled down and now he's putting about 30 or 40 hours into each individual thumbnail, Right. So I think it's the opposite. I think Dumez, he's going to need more money for those thumbnails. Colin Bush. Rick ain't offensive enough. Far too polite. You know, I noticed one thing. I noticed one thing uh, about offensiveness. Sometimes you can say the same things and if you do it in a separate way, or if you come at something from a separate way, you could say the same things. And this is in real life, too. Sometimes you can get across what you want to say, but uh, you know the expression, you can get more flies with honey than you can with vinegar? That applies for YouTube and real life. I found that I've actually tweaked a bit um, the style of how I come across with things and my critical satire. I've tweaked a bit. And then I noticed that there's a lot more people that actually will come around and actually listen to me and my arguments because I just made some made some tweaks. All right, that's another Radical Rapid Fire Combo response in the books. Have a great day. 